is, we laugh a lot, we rap a lot. I'm asked, I'll be an Indian again, again. I'm telling them that Colin Bill is worried. That's a will we on the field the court. They better be aware of that. They scared of that. Of course, look at the ceiling. What up, Mr. Floor? Yeah, Colin Bill. Yes, I'm glad to say that I'm a K Hawk. I'm about to graduate. Yeah. And, and a very good evening, evening everyone, as we welcome you to K Hawk Stadium, Stadium here on the campus of Collinsville High School as we get you set for some home soccer action as your Collinsville K Hawks get ready to take on the Titans of Glenwood High School out of Chatham, Illinois. My name is Todd Duke. Glad you're with us here on the K Hawk Sports Network. I guess you could consider this the real home opener because. Collinsville has played a couple of games here already, but that was in a tournament that started off on uh, Friday of last week. Away, obviously, because we were here doing a football game. And then it concluded the next day on Saturday with a couple of games in which Collinsville actually won that tournament. And I guess we could consider this one the actual home opener. We welcome you in to the Chiropractic Works pregame show. Chiropractic Works in Collinsville. Owned and operated by Dr. Chris McCluskey. He and his crew are focused on helping as many people as possible with high quality lives all through chiropractic care and wellness. You can visit Dr. McCluskey at Chiropractic Works in Collinsville. 410 Regency Center just off of the Beltline Road where you can call 343-3602 or online ChiropracticWorksCollinsville. Dot com. JV, JV game still going on. They had a little uh, switcheroo in the schedule because of some bus issues up at Chatham. So uh, this was originally scheduled for a five o'clock start JV and then, or excuse me, four thirty JV and then six o'clock for the varsity game. But everything got pushed back an hour. JV on the field right now. Collins will leading two to one with about four minutes left to go in this contest. And then they'll have a five minute break in between games. Then they will announce the starting rosters for both teams and have the national anthem. And then we'll get the varsity game underway. So that is where we stand. As, As of right, right now, Collinsville comes in perfect. perfect. Right, right now, they are four and zero oh on the season. season. As, As the Glenwood Titans, Titans come in overall at three 
two, and one. Collinsville is averaging five goals per game so far this year. They're outscoring their opponents thus far, 20 to two, and they're only giving up a half a goal per game. As far as Chatham is concerned, and between these two schools, there is a little bit of history. This uh, team got put on our schedule about three years ago when Coach Smith began uh, his, uh, his first year as, as the boys head coach, head coach and he and, and, uh, he and uh, head coach Jay White for the Glenwood soccer team. They're, they're friends, so they decided they wanted to play each other. So here we are, the fourth year. The previous three years all went the way of the Titans. Last year at Chatham Glenwood, Collinsville lost four to three. Zane Baker had a goal in that game. Logan Whitehead had two. Collinsville scored two goals in the first half. Glenwood scored three in the first half, and then each team tallied one in the second half, and Collinsville, after that loss at that point last year, was 3-3. Three and three. So right now they are 4-0, and 0-3 oh, and oh and versus the Titans since they were added to that schedule in 2015. Had a chance to talk about that and more things with Collinsville's head coach Rob Lugie. We'll pass that conversation on to you next as the Chiropractic Works pregame show continues here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Chris McCluskey and I'm excited to be here talking to you about one of our favorite products that we offer to the practice members in our office. It's called Rico's Bioenergy Band. Now over the last 15 years that I've been in health and wellness, we've been blessed to grow one of the busiest pediatric and family wellness centers in the United States where we've helped tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. So now today we're going to talk about Rico's Bioenergy Bands. It's a simple band that you wear around your wrist or your ankle. Uh, we even have dog bands. What the Bioenergy Band does, it helps you live a higher quality of life, which is exactly what my purpose in life is, is to help as many people live as high quality of life for as long as possible. So we're going to introduce to you Rico, the band, the science and technology. We're going to perform a test for you all to show you how the product works. I'm Rico with Rico's Bioenergy. I created Rico's Bioenergy wristbands. We've been around for around seven years and this company has grown to a $20 million company because we have a great product and it works. And we welcome you back into the Chiropractic Works pregame show, show here on the Cahawks Sports, Sports Network. As tonight we are back at Cahawks Stadium. Stadium. Our first look at the boys' soccer team at home. And joining us now on the pregame show is Townsville head coach Rob Lugie. Let's go back to the uh, Belleville West game after you've had some time to digest it, look at some film, your overall thoughts. You know, it was a, it was a good game. Um, you know, as a coach, you nitpick and you, you look for the mistakes. Uh, well, while well, the first half, it was only one nothing. Uh, we, did we did some good things. things. There was obviously things we needed to fix. Uh, but when we talked at halftime, the boys embraced what we talked about, and you know they came out and scored five goals. goals. So, so you know, you know it's, it's a good change. change. That is a good change. All right. I'm an old school guy. I like to read the newspaper. I like to hold a newspaper in my hand. I'm not one of those get my news online kind of guys, but I opened the uh, back page of the sports section today and saw that Zane Baker was one of the athletes of the week on the Post-Dispatch. So uh, that's pretty cool early on in the season to get that kind of recognition. Yeah, well, and Zane deserves it. Um, he's, he's worked hard for, for four years. Um, he's the leading goal scorer on our team right now, four goals in four games. Um, and he's just kind of, he's turned into a leader for us, which is a good thing. What, uh, what kind of leadership qualities does he bring to the team and how does he help the other guys? I think it's, for him, it's kind of leadership, uh, just kind of showing kids. Like, uh, when we run, which we run a lot, uh, Zane is always first. Um, he just kind of never quits. Uh, at times he can be a little emotional, but we all can. Uh, but he's really worked on that and he's brought that in and you can tell by his leadership now. We uh, talked a little, a little bit about, about some of the individual players, players um, Tuesday, Tuesday night at Belleville West. One of the guys I didn't touch on was uh, Luke Lilgerman. He didn't get a goal in that game, but man, he had chances, and he looked like he was a uh, man possessed out there. Yeah, Luke, is, uh, he's had a good year, and um, we're just glad that he scored in the Bruce Central game, so he could kind of relax from there. Uh, I think the big part about Luke was uh, his willingness to give that fourth goal, to, or that fifth goal. No, the sixth goal to Zane. Luke could have easily shot and scored that goal, no problem. But he was unselfish enough to give it to Zane and for Zane to just tap it in. That's a big thing for us right now, just them being unselfish with each other. Yeah, you guys were flying all over the place in that Belleville West game, so I'm guessing the problem with your guys is it? No, we, uh, we kind of beat that into their heads. You know, We will not be outworked. We will always be number one when it comes to winning a ball, getting there first. It's kind of where, you know, we're trying to go back to the old console or wherever. We have people fear to come in here. 
So this is your second year at the beginning of this year. Did things run a little smoother for you since you had that one year under your belt? A lot, a lot smoother. Um, I kind of I knew what to expect coming into the summer uh, and into the school, into the year. So it has been a much smoother first couple weeks than last year. Yes. All right, you have Jetham Glenwood. Uh, this is a team that uh, Coach Smith put on the schedule a couple of years ago when he was uh, the boys' head coach for those couple of years because he's got a good relationship with their head coach. Uh, but since they have been put on the schedule, you guys haven't been able to beat them yet. So uh, they're, they're a really good storied program and very well coached. So talk to me about what you know about this Chatham Glenwood team and what it's going to take to finally pull out a W against them. Well, you know, last year we played a good game against them and just things, you know, the ball didn't bounce our way. Uh, it, was, it was a good game. It was back and forth, and I think it was 2-1 to one maybe or one nothing. It was a close game. Um, and this team's a little different. They were senior heavy last year, similar to where we are now. Uh, they're young. They have, uh, in talking to their coaches, they're great guys. Uh, they have, they're starting five sophomores, at least they did this weekend when they were here at our tournament. So they're, they're in a similar position to us last year. You know, kind of rebuilding, but trying to maintain a, a high level of soccer. I did, I did hear that they were in the uh, tournament, but as it turned out, not on the same side of the bracket as you guys, so you didn't get to play them, but I'm sure that you and the coaches got to watch? Yeah, we did. You know, it was, you know, we kind of, uh, we didn't want to have to play them two, two times in a week. Uh, that's not why we had the tournament. It was to, to bring other teams in and, you know, play other teams. So playing them that's this past weekend wasn't the, the goal. And, yeah, watching them, they played a good, tough game against Kirkwood, a uh, good game against Timothy Christian. They're just a, they're a good program. All right, so uh, you have them here tonight, and um, tell me a little bit about what you noticed about them during that tournament that maybe you can use to your advantage. Well, inexperience is a big thing. Um, you know, with, with them, you know, a lot of those players were JV players last year. So, you know, kind of attacking them, because this is a big game. This is going to hopefully be a big crowd. You know, this is a big game for us. Um, you know, first real home game, uh, not considering the, not counting the tournament. Uh, so hopefully we can kind of put them under pressure quickly and get them out of their game. Uh, Tuesday, the JV game got canceled because of the heat, so I haven't really had a chance to look at the JV team. They're out there right now, but they just got started. Uh, tell us a little bit about this year's junior varsity version of your soccer club. They're a, they're a, they're a very good team. Um, we are fortunate enough to have a lot of depth this year to where, you know, these boys, if they were in a different program, would be playing a lot of varsity minutes. Um, unfortunately for them, we have a senior heavy team to where, you know, their minutes will be limited on the, on the varsity side. Uh, eight of them are dual roster players, um, so we, we tend to think that that's the future out there. And, you know, the hope is that they gain the experience this year with seniors and then can take it over next year. Thanks for the visit, Coach. Good luck tonight. Thank you. And as I said, Coach Rob Luby of your Council of Cahawk Boys soccer team, we'll take a break here on the Chiropractic Works pregame show. When we come back, we'll set the starting rosters for you, and then we'll have some boys varsity soccer action. All that and more coming up next on the Cahawk Sports Network. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Chris McCluskey and I'm excited to be here talking to you about one of our favorite products that we offer to the practice members in our office. It's called Rico's Bioenergy Band. Now over the last 15 years that I've been in health and wellness, we've been blessed to grow one of the busiest pediatric and family wellness centers in the United States where we've helped tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. So and today we're going to talk about Rico's Bioenergy Bands. It's a simple band that you wear around your wrist or your ankle. Uh, we even have dog bands. What the Bioenergy Band does, it helps you live a higher quality of life, which is exactly what my purpose in life is, is to help as many people live as high quality of life for as long as possible. So we're going to introduce to you Rico, the band, the science and technology. We're going to perform a test for you all to show you how the product works. I'm Rico with Rico's Bioenergy. I created Rico's Bioenergy wristbands. We've been around for around seven years and this company has grown to a $20 million company because we have a great product and it works. And once, and once again, we welcome you back into the broadcast booth here at K-Hawk Stadium. I'm Todd Duke. Zach Roseman will be here in just a little bit, joining us as the cameraman, providing a little color as well. Let's take a look at your starting rosters for both of these clubs. The Linwood Titans, they are coached by Jay Leip, and they have these starters. Caden Sporer will get the start. He is a sophomore. A senior is Kate Trotvetter. Also another sophomore in there is Tyler Reihard. Garrett Crushell, 
is a sophomore, as is Logan Dees Connor is a junior, and Alec Votava is also a junior. Nico Scott is a senior. Patrick Marker, a junior. Riley Hockstein, a junior, and Griffin Harms is also a junior. And between the pipes, as the goalkeeper for the Titans is senior Caleb Fink. And because, uh, of course, uh, Chatham is out of the St. Louis area, I have a hard time finding stats and numbers to pass along to you, so I uh, really don't have any. I have a roster, and I have a record, and uh, that's about all I could come up with. So we will uh, kind of track things along as we move along here. For Collinsville, they will trot out the same starting 11 they did on Tuesday night against Belve L. West. Junior Spencer Vlasic, senior Trey Simpson, senior Zach Covey, senior Logan Whitehead, senior Donovan Scott Gass, Senior Spencer Pies, Luke Logren, another senior, as is Trey Shibish, Zane Baker, and Ethan Willhold, a senior. And then between the pipes, manning the goal tonight for Collinsville, again, is the senior Tate Wyatt. So a very senior-heavy lineup here for Collinsville as they begin game number five here in just a moment between the Glenwood Titans. And your Collinsville Cayhawks. A big thank you to our sponsor, Free Game Show, Chiropractic Works in Collinsville. And again, Dr. Chris McCluskey and his crew, we thank them very much. 343 3602 is their number or online, Chiropractic Works Collinsville. Com. We will take our final time out here in the Chiropractic Works pregame show. When we come back, we will have some soccer action for you. That'll be just mere moments away on the Cayhawk Sports Network. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Chris McCluskey and I'm excited to be here talking to you about one of our favorite products that we offer to the practice members in our office. It's called Rico's Bioenergy Band. Now over the last 15 years that I've been in health and wellness, we've been blessed to grow one of the busiest pediatric and family wellness centers in the United States where we've helped tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. So and today we're going to talk about Rico's Bioenergy Bands. It's a simple band that you wear around your wrist or your ankle. Uh, we even have dog bands. What the Bioenergy Band does, it helps you live a higher quality of life, which is exactly what my purpose in life is, is to help as many people live as high quality of life for as long as possible. So we're going to introduce to you Rico, the band, the science and technology. We're going to perform a test for you all to show you how the product works. I'm Rico with Rico's Bioenergy. I created Rico's Bioenergy wristbands. We've been around for around seven years, and this company has grown to a $20 million company because we have a great product and it works. Code 3 Barbecue Supply, home of Code 3 Spices, is first responder owned by proud Cayhawk alums. Located at 302 East Main Street, Code 3 Barbecue Supply is your home for one-of-a-kind everything barbecue headquarters, providing the best American-made barbecue grills, smokers, rubs, sauces, and accessories, and cooking expertise from professional barbecue experts. Code 3 Spices provides award-winning rubs, sauces, and they donate 25 cents of each unit sold to first responder and military organizations that focus on providing aid to the fallen, suicide prevention, and PTSD awareness. Stop on by, see the guys at Code 3 Barbecue Supply for all of your cooking and grilling needs. Code 3 Barbecue Supply, home of the Memphis in May first place world champion Patriot sauce. Learn more about their products and mission in giving back to those who serve at Code3Spices.com. At Visionary Wealth Advisors, we empower you to see your future before it's your future. To create your inheritance. To build your vision. To anticipate the known and unknown. and to find potential in both and build new dawns. Visionary Wealth Advisors.
And, and once again, again we welcome you back into the, the broadcast booth here at K Hawk Stadium. Todd Duke, Zach, Zach Roseman, Roseman along with you as we get you set for this game between Collinsville and Glenwood, Glenwood the, Titans. the Titans. The Titans are the road team, of course, traveling all the way up here or down, down here from Chatham, right, right outside the Springfield area. area. They will be dressed in white. Will, will the Titans, Titans, their numbers on the backs and the fronts of their jerseys, are in red with. I believe, I believe Titans, Titans across the front of their jerseys. Can't, can't tell right now. now. K-Hawks, and, and they switched, switched it up this year, so now the home team will wear the dark clothes and the road team will wear the lighter colored clothes. So we were on the road Tuesday when Collinsville wore the whites. Now we're back home, and they are wearing the purple uniforms with the white numbers on the front and the back in goal. Will be Tate White. He'll be dressed all in green and sporting a big fat zero on the front and the back of his jersey. And I believe over at the other rim, we're going to have the same color con concept, if you will, for the... Titans goalkeeper, goalkeeper. And, and that, that is Caleb, Caleb Fink as he has on black shorts, shorts and a green shirt also sporting the number zero on his jersey. Still, Still can't, can't tell what the front of those say, can you? Nope. 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 Neither, Neither can I. Well, well that's, that's what I have... Uh, but binoculars for that I never remember to break out. out. We, we are about, about ready to go. go. That's Zach Roseman who just said nope. And my, my name is Todd Duke. Glad that you're with us. Zach's going to operate the camera here tonight, amongst other things. And we are underway. Chatham Glenwood kicks the ball all the way down. And the Titans will watch it go right into the hands of Tate Wyatt, which it does. And now Wyatt will put it back into play. Junior varsity team won by a final score of 3 to 1. And Collinsville trying to. Turn the two-game two sweep here and beat the Glenwood, Glenwood Titans, Titans for the first time in three tries. The previous three have ended, and here's a shot toward the goal, and one of the defenders, nice job, by the way, for Griffin Harms. He got back there as the goalkeeper, Fink, went out to commit to the play, and the ball got past him, but there was Griffin Harms who kicked the ball out of the way, and Collinsville will have a throw-in from the far side sideline. Uh, Good early opportunity for Collinsville. Um, hopefully we can uh, continue that. Here comes the throw in. High. Right toward the middle of the net. Off ahead and in. Oh, that's a way to start. Ethan will hold. Scores the opening goal just 65 seconds in. Will hold. That's a good start. Yeah, yeah gets, gets his, his first goal of the year. 65 seconds into the first. And see, I'm not, I'm not doing my job already. Forgot, forgot to start, start my clock. So we'll, we'll let, let that thing run, run for a little while. while. Hopefully we'll catch up at some point. point. How about that? that? Will hold right, right off of a throw in. in. Hit him, him in the back, back of the head. head. And went, went in, past Fink, Fink. So, so a nice, nice start for Collinsville as they tried to break that 0 for 3 against this Glenwood team. As that ball ends up going out of bounds. Last, Last touch they're going to say by harm, so another throw in coming. Spencer Pies, he was the one who threw that ball in over on the far side. He'll do the same thing over here on this side as well. Let's we'll see if this one can be just as successful. Right, right toward the middle and off of the chest out front, I believe, of Harms again. So I've already called Griffin Harms' name a few times as he's had a couple of nice defensive plays. Just two minutes in. I'm a minute off on my clock. We'll get there. New toys to play with, and sometimes I forget to play with them. Titans. Back, back on their heels, heels a bit after, after that goal. goal. Collinsville trying to keep the ball into the offensive zone, zone but the Titans, Titans bring, bring it on out. Collinsville chips it on up, and then they'll send it all the way back to their goalkeeper, Tate Wyatt. Wyatt, Wyatt just, just inside the box, box trying to eye up a place, place to kick it. He does. Near side, sideline, all the way down. Nice, nice job in there once again. It is the defense. This time, Alec Latava. He uses his head to keep that ball out of Collinsville's offensive zone. And there is Willhold who just scored the goal. Into the middle of the fray for Zach Covey. Over on the far side, that is Scott Gass. Sends it up the sideline. Finds a teammate, Luke Lilgren. Chips it back up. Trying to give a chase over there was Trey Simpson, but 
Ball, ball got, got past, past him, and now a couple of players collide, and that draws, draws a whistle. whistle. That, that one's going to go against the Titans, Titans so Collinsville will have a free kick from about 50 yards away. Ball, ball comes in just up the sideline over there to Liljegren. Liljegren trying to fight his way around, and Liljegren's going to get called for a foul this time as he tripped up one of the Titans players over there on the far side of the field. So a free kick coming up from way deep for the Titans. will allow us a chance to thank one of our new sponsors. How about Pace Design and Construction in Maryville? Whether you're building a new home, making an addition to the home you currently own, or finally getting around to that remodeling job that you've been putting off, Pace Design and Construction in Maryville can help. Chance for Collinsville again. Liljegren. Oh, what a nice save there by Caleb Fink as he came out. Ball still in play, and it goes on top. Of the, the net. Pace, Pace Design and Construction, construction by the way, is a building and remodeling contractor and one that you can trust. They provide, they provide the highest quality. They are dedicated to their customers and are committed to completing your project on time and within budget. Pace, Pace Design and Construction in Maryville. Call 618-407-5466 or online pacedesignconstruct.com. Facebook, Pace Construct Design on the Facebook page. There's another scoop up save by Caleb Fink, as he's been a little busy here early on, as Collinsville leads this one by a score of one to nothing. Collinsville have dominated both territory and possession so far in the first four and a bit minutes. This is a very good start. They are doing a pretty good job of keeping the ball in their offensive zone as well. They have not Giving, giving the Titans, Titans a lot of room to maneuver downfield down and make a run at their own chance of offense. So defense is doing a good job. Will, will hold. Picking, picking up the first goal of the year for him. him. Hopefully many, many more to come. come. Here's Luke Liljegren. Liljegren in, in the middle of the field. Lobs a pass into the box off of the head of Griffin Harms. Harms and that was an easy pickup pick there for Caleb Fink in goal. goal. And, and we'll bring, bring it back the other way. way. 34, 34 and a half minutes to play here in this first half. half. Collins will up one nothing. JV won three to one. Girls volleyball, volleyball team in action at Civic Memorial, Memorial tonight. We'll pass along any information we get as soon as I get it. And then of course we'll have some football action for you tomorrow as we take, take a little road trip over to Troy for a battle with the Triad Knights. Free kick restart here for. The, the Titans, Titans, that ball stays low, bounces, bounces through midfield. midfield. Collinsville pushes it up. There's Scott, Scott Gass up to Luke Liljegren. Liljegren trying to get run down from behind, had the ball poked away from him. him. Now over on the far side, side tracking it right down is Trey Shibish. And he puts the ball all the way up on the far side sideline. Side and going in for it was Donovan Scott Gass, and he got his feet taken out from underneath him. But, but for some, some reason or another, another, no call was made, made and the Titans, Titans will have the throw in. The throw in comes right down onto the foot of Nico Scott. Scott loses control of it. Collinsville picks up the loose ball. Now it's another loose ball, and this time, Winwood momentarily comes away with it. Moving the ball up now is Zach Covey. Covey through the middle. Zigzags and lost the ball in the process, and Griffin Harms finds it and sends the ball up. That is Connor Dees with it. Dees on the near side sideline. We leave it back for Harms. and. A nice, nice try on the steal there by Zane Baker, Baker named one, one of the athletes of the week in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Post that, that was, of course, for last week. I had the chance to look through that article earlier today, and I think he was the only, the only soccer player. Not certain on that, though. He might be right. There's a big shot by Pies all the way down, just trying to keep the pressure down in the offensive zone for Collinsville, but nice, easy bouncing ball for Fink to handle, and Fink sends a sky-high ball back down the field as it rolls toward Tate Wyatt. Wyatt will slow things down. Still in the box now, he'll pick it up as one of the defenders was, or forwards was closing in. Now, now White ready to send it back down. down. All, All the way back, back to midfield it goes. Here is Harms off of his head, trying to get it to his teammate, Hochstein. Ball bouncing around, whistle on the play. 
call, call goes, goes against, against the Titans. Titans. So, so Collinsville, Collinsville will get a free kick, kick right from, from the midfield, midfield circle. Zach Covey. Covey. Looks, Looks like he'll line, line this shot, shot up to take it. it. Is uh, he still, still playing kicker, kicker for the football team? team? No, no, he is not. not. Mm. That, that would be Luis Perez, Perez who was handling, handling the kicking duties this past Friday. Friday. That, that ball went all the way down on the fly. And, and caught, caught in the air by Fink. Fink. And Fink now, now sends the ball out. Collinsville trying to keep, keep the offensive pressure on, on, but the Titans, Titans trying to think otherwise. And now, now Zach Coffey gets a whistle against him, and the Titans, Titans will, will get a free, free kick, kick from about 40, 40 yards away. away. Benches are on the other side, side of the field this year. year. They were down, down here in front of us last year. I wonder why they changed it. I don't know. They, they do the same thing for football, too. too. There's the ensuing free kick, kick and off of the head, head of Will Holt as he makes a nice defensive play. play. He uses his, his head on offense and defense there. there. Now, now, the Titans, Titans are trying to keep the ball in the offensive zone. They do so with a shot. Near, near the sideline side on the far side, but on one bounce, Tate Wyatt, Wyatt comes out and takes care of it before any harm can be done. Wyatt, ready, ready to send, send it back out. He does so. so. Popped up, up in the air. air. Now, now down, and now a whistle. This, this one's, one's going to go against Collinsville again. again. Collinsville with some aggressive play. play. And getting, and getting whistled, whistled for just about each and every one of them. Ball, Ball back, back into play, play and off of the head of Spencer Pies and out of bounds. Ball, Ball comes back in, here is Harms. Harms, Harms will send it back to Vatava. Vatava pops, pops one over onto the far side. side. Now back, back out toward the middle. middle. That, that is Dees. Dees. Dees gets, gets the ball up, and, and nice defensive, defensive play there by Collinsville, Collinsville to keep that ball from going any farther, but here is Hockstein. Hockstein gives the ball up and a shot toward, toward the goal, taken there by Caden Sporer, but Collinsville's defense there once again to block that out and keep things from turning into a scoring opportunity here for the Titans. And now Collinsville gets the ball all the way back down into the offensive zone once again. I really do have to give credit to this defensive group for Collinsville. They, I don't know if it's because the offense has been so dominant or when it strikes me that they've, the whole team has been very, very good defensively through these first few games. Yeah, Collinsville's always had sound defense on their soccer club, both the boys and the girls' side. I you know that Coach Smith and by virtue of Coaching under Coach Smith, Coach, Coach Rob Lukey preaches a lot of defense as well. Another whistle on the play, and again, it's going to go against Collinsville. Looks like this uh, refereeing group <laughs> being a little one-sided right now, isn't it? This is, is going to come from about 50 yards away. And it's going to be taken by Alec Votava. Votava. Uh, backfielder, he's a junior. Titans, Titans lost a lot to graduation, graduation last year. They, they don't have nearly as many seniors as Collinsville does. Here's a ball that's caught right, right in the bread basket there by Tate Wyatt. Didn't, didn't touch anything on the way. way. So, so it was a nice easy grab for Wyatt. Wyatt. As we have played about 12 minutes in this one. Wyatt sends the ball packing past midfield. midfield. Off of one, one of the Glenwood, Glenwood players, and again, Collinsville, Collinsville called, called for another foul. This, this one is going to go against Donovan, Donovan Scott Gass. Gass. Both, Both players went up for the ball, and the Titans player hit him right in the head, head and then the whistle blew. They didn't see much contact, and if there was, it was probably incidental. Now Collinsville, Collinsville trying to bring the ball up. Over on the far side, nice little move there by Spencer Vlasic for just a second, got around somebody, but Titans were there to clean up the trash, and now that ball goes across the end line, put there by Collinsville, so a corner kick upcoming here for the Titans. 
Zane, Zane Baker, Baker, the leading goal scorer for Collinsville, Collinsville with five. Right, right behind, behind him, Luke Logigrin and, and Logan Whitehead, Whitehead with four. four. Corner, Corner kick, kick on the way. way. It's, it's a little, little bit short, and it falls out in front of the purple area of the football end zone. Titans, Titans trying, trying to keep the ball in play, but they're, they're not going to be able to do that, that. And, and Collinsville will get the ball back. back. Let's, Let's thank Pac Mail. They're locally owned and operated. Mr. Ryan Combs is the owner operator there. Pac Mail can ship anything anywhere. They treat you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. Pac Mail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate controlled self storage. You can visit PacMail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online, we ship st. Louis. St. Louis. or you can call 346-4884. Titans, Titans put a little bit more pressure on Collinsville now, keeping the ball in their offensive zone a little bit longer than they have for the first 10 minutes of this game. Now here's Logan Whitehead. He'll send it back to the defense, and Pies will take over. He'll send it back as well, and now a uh, ball kicked out of there by Tate Wyatt all the way to midfield. And, and off of a, a Titans, Titans player and out of bounds, so Collinsville will get, get possession right at midfield. And, and we have our first player exchanges going on. Logan Whitehead will head to the bench. Elvis Campos will come in and take over for him. He has a handful of goals so far this year, doesn't he? Campos scores, he has scored three, scored two Tuesday night against Belleville West. Collinsville wants to get more than that one goal here in the first half, and they're working hard at it. Here is Campos. Campos sends it right in the middle to Donovan Scott Gass. Scott Gass tries to work it up and trying to find Luke Liljegren breaking in over there on the far side of the box, but that ball had a little bit too much bend on it. And Kind of swept its way right into the Titans defense, but a whistle on the play will give Collinsville a free kick from about 30 yards out, and it'll be Trey Shivish who will take this kick. So finally, Collinsville gets a whistle to go their way, and it just so happens to be that they're deep inside their offensive zone. Here is the kick and a bouncer. One bounce, Fink picks it up, and that was all that scoring chance was going to be. At, At midfield, Dees sends, sends it up, trying, trying to find some offense for the Titans. Titans. Here is Willhold, who has the only goal here in this game, game up to Campos. Campos, Campos. near, near side sideline, side had that ball just tick off of the foot of Griffin Harms, so, so a throw in comes in, and a loose ball rolls all the way over onto the far side sideline, side circling with, with the ball, and dribbling it up is Garrett Kroschel. Collinsville picks it off right at midfield. Only for a moment. Now, Hawks bring it back up. Donovan, Donovan Scott Gass puts, puts on a shot, and it goes wide. And out the other, the other end of the track. track. 23 and a half minutes to play here in this first half. half. 65 seconds in. Will hold. Ethan Will hold. Scores a goal on a nice throw in by Spencer Pies. Right off of Will Hold's head and into the net. Here's, Here's Caleb, Caleb Fink. Fink. Fink will send that ball back down, back down right off of the chest of Campos, Campos and then Harms gets it, sends it, sends it all the way down, but it's going to bounce out of bounds right at the Cahawk bench. bench. Collins will get the ball back. And Donovan got gas goes out, and Logan Whitehead checks back in. Ethan Alexander, Ethan Alexander checks into the game for the first time for Glenwood, Glenwood as Harms, Harms tries to chase down a loose ball. He's, He's in a race with Campos, and Harms got there first to kick the ball out of bounds. It'll be another throw-in coming up here for Spencer Pies. He's got a strong arm to get that ball all the way to where it needs to be. Throw-in on the way. Off, off of ahead, head. that belongs to one of the Titans. Kick it back out, and it comes right back to Pies. He sends it up toward the middle. 
And, and a ball, ball that kind of trickles, trickles through both the offense and the defense for Collinsville without really touching anyone is picked up by Caleb Fink. Fink, Fink sends, sends the ball down. Takes, takes a couple, couple of bounces and kick back, back to where it came, came from by Spencer Vlasic. Right, right out to midfield. Stopped, Stopped there by Hochstein. And he and, and Logan Whitehead, Whitehead run into each other. Each other. And, and now Luke Lilgerin had the ball just trickle off of his foot and goes right to Harms, so Harms can get it out of Harms' way. way. Eh, crack, crack myself up sometimes. sometimes. Eh. <laughs> uh, I always tell, tell my daughter, daughter not to laugh at her own jokes. jokes. She, she does. I mean, I mean she, she laughs hard at her own jokes. jokes. First of all, I say it's not that funny. Second of all, you shouldn't laugh at your own jokes. Here is Andrew Heaton. For tight, the, the Titans, Titans trying, trying to get, get some, some kind of a scoring, scoring opportunity, but right, right off of a Collinsville player, player, and that ball is going to put a little bit of a spin right, right to Tate Wyatt. Wyatt. Seems, Seems like, like any chances the Titans have managed to get them have been few and far between and not, not all that successful. Yeah, yeah not, not of high quality, are they? Yeah. Here's, Here's Campos. Campos. Collinsville leads one to nothing, looking for. Another, Another goal, goal as we are just about halfway through this first half. The JV, JV game, they only played two 25-minute halves. They only had five minutes in between periods. periods. Here it's the uh, regular regulation time, 40 minutes each half. Ben, ben Fulkerson, Fulkerson checks, checks into, into the game, game for, for the first time for the Titans. Titans. And the throw-in getting, getting ready to come from right, right underneath our location, location by Spencer Pies as soon as all of the substitutions are finished, completed. Ready to go. That probably, probably took, took a bunch of time off the clock. clock. Well, I think, I think they, they stopped, stopped it there for a second. second. Ryan, Ryan Null comes, comes into, into the game, game for, for the first time for Collinsville. Collinsville. As the play takes place in midfield, yeah, there was uh, Zach Coffee just kind of pushing Andrew Heaton down, down from behind, and even, even I saw that one. That whistle went, went like that. that. Collinsville, Collinsville commits another infraction, infraction and another free kick coming up right from midfield here. For the, the Titans, this one going to be handled by Patrick Marker. Marker's, Marker's ball, bounces, bounces skips, skips, and put, put in the goal by, by Patrick, Patrick Marker. Marker. So that, that was Garrett, Garrett Kroschel, Kroschel with the kick. kick. And, and we're tied 1-1. One, one. One. Trying, Trying to get let my, my clock run down and match the clock, the clock I, I have here. here. What? what? Now they, they went 1930 on the clock. I'm sitting here just not speaking, waiting for it to get down to 1917. So now, so now I'll have to do that all over again. again. There's, There's a, a bouncing ball, ball that sink, sink handles. handles. All right, now, now we, are we are caught up with the game, game clock, clock here. here. Marker, Marker scores, scores it up to make it a 1-1 one one game. game. Something I've noticed in regards to substitutions in regards to the boys game versus the girls game. I don't know if this is just, if this is a difference between Coach Smith and Coach Lugie, but it seems like the girls substitute a decent amount more than the guys do. Yeah, I think it all depends on the conditions as well, I'm not sure. Got a couple of substitutions. It's very humid out here. and There's a uh, whistle. 
And I believe that is Zane Baker who is down on the ground after being kicked in the shin. I thought the foul was assessed on number 14. I thought it was Andrew Heat number 11. But they, they really don't, don't make it a point to point, point out which number is this. It's not like basketball when they tell you which number committed the foul. Collinsville's going to get another free kick from about 40 yards away. It's on, on the way. It's a lob shot. And off, off of a head and off of the crossbar. crossbar. Comes back down in the field to play, though. His play stays alive. Collinsville almost scored number two. There was a shot that just got blocked right in front. That must have hurt whoever it hit because that was a rocket. And it only traveled about maybe four feet before it met. Somebody's body, body part out there. there. Here's, Here's the man who just scored, scored the goal, Patrick Marker. Marker, Marker gets, gets the ball back to Connor Dees. Dees sends the ball up and right through the middle it goes. And trying to take control of it is Andrew Heaton. Now the Titans have a little bit of momentum going in their direction. Here's Dees. Dees at midfield brings it over to this side for Camden Benemeyer. Benemeyer had the ball go out of bounds. Campos was there. Campos was the last to touch it, says. The referees, the referees, and that ball is dropped, dropped into, into the near side sideline side to Patrick Marker. Marker. Marker works, works the ball up to Nico Scott. Scott. That, that ball ended up going out of bounds, and I believe that Ben and Meyer knew, knew it. it. It didn't go out of bounds by that much, but it, it did go. Luke Lilgebrin heads to the bench. Donovan, Donovan Scott gas back, back into the game. game. Throw in, in. by Pies. Trying, trying to find Logan Whitehead, Whitehead but instead it found the head of Garrett Kroschel and right, right out of bounds. So Pies will do it all over again, again but he gets to move up about 40 yards for this throw in. in. One, one, one our score. score. We're still in the first. Started this game at 7-10. Originally scheduled for a 6 o'clock start, but... Here's, Here's Logan Whitehead. Whitehead. Oh, that ricocheted off of one of his defenders, defenders and lucky for Caleb Fink, Fink. He was standing in the right spot at the right time. time. Yeah, this, this game was supposed to start at 6, so the uh, kids, kids from, from the Springfield, Springfield area could get back at a decent hour. hour. They had some bus problems, and they pushed, pushed the time up to 7. We actually got underway about 7.10. Here's Pies. Trying to get it out of there, and they do so with a Ball, ball up the sideline. Side throw, throw in coming, coming from Nico Scott. Scott. Substitution going on here for the Titans. Like three are coming in? That would be, uh, probably. probably. Maybe, Maybe one, one for Collinsville. This is somebody coming off. off. Yeah, it looks, looks like Zane, Zane Baker. Baker. Back, Back into the game. game. Looks, Looks like he's okay, okay after taking that, that shot to the shin. shin. Here is Campos. Campos pops the ball up. It's going to land near, near the midfield circle after a head shot and a chest shot. Campos, Campos picks it up, shoots, shoots it on over, gives it up to Daylon Frecker. 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 He, he moves the ball up. Pass, trying to find Campos in the middle off of a defender for the Titans, and the Titans take control of it, and they try to move the ball back up. Here is Connor Dees, Dees, all the way over on the far, far side sideline, and I believe that hit a hand of one of the Collinsville players, so that draws the whistle, and the Titans will have a throw in pretty much at midfield. Another one of our new sponsors to thank, how about Metro East Roofing and Guttering? Locally owned and operated since 1987 by brothers and Cahawk alums, Tony and Corey Jones. Metro East Roofing and Guttering can help you with all of your roofing, guttering, and siding needs. Located, located at 1231 Lebanon Road in Collinsville. Metro East Roofing and Guttering is the hometown company you know and trust. You can call them at 345-5679 today for your free estimate. You can visit their Facebook page at Metro East Roofing and Guttering. Uh, one small correction on our part. It appears that we have... Uh, I'm not, not sure what his first name is, but apparently the pronunciation is Poteva. Just, Just had a Glenwood fan come, come in and correct us politely. Um, ball, ball popped up, up in the air. air. Out, out to, to midfield. midfield. Here's, Here's Harms. 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 
works, works his, his way through, through a couple of defenders. But then the defenders close in on him, and, and they get the ball out, but only for a moment, trying to get it back up. And creating an opportunity is Nico Scott, but Collins will get a hold of it and sends it back to midfield. Here is Tyler Ryherd. Ryherd loses control of the ball. Whitehead trying to get up there to get a shot on goal, but he can't. As the Titans circle the wagons and bring it back upfield, but that one ends up going out of bounds right at midfield. And the Titans will have another throw-in restart here. Coming up on 13 minutes left to play. Here in this first half, 1-1 contest. Titans penetrate the offensive zone. Hochstein shoots it on up, and now Collinsville will just send the ball back to Tate, Tate Wyatt, Wyatt, and Wyatt, Wyatt will send it back out, out and it finds, finds the body, body once again of Hochstein. Back, back out to midfield it goes. Campos, Campos trying, trying to get there. there. Can't, can't do it. And, and the ball ends up going all the way, way down the field, field and that will be out of bounds. And, bounds, and once again, it will remain in possession. possession. Well, well Collinsville is going to get possession of it this time. More, more player, player exchanges going on. It's a humid night, not as hot as it has been the last couple of days after we had that batch of rain move through yesterday. But it is still, still humid. humid. Zane, Zane Baker and Trey Shibish check, check back, back into, into the game. game. Yeah, yeah, I got, got that, that wrong. Wolgergren, Wolgergren and Shibish checking, checking back, back in. in. Here, Here is Shibish, and he gets pushed from behind. So, so Collinsville, Collinsville will get to enjoy a free, free kick from about 50 yards, yards away. away. All, All the way over to the far side. side. Ball that was, was heading toward the net, net knocked out by a Titans player off of the chest, chest of Shibish, and he pops one, one up in the air, and that one's going to go wide and out, out of bounds. bounds. 11, 11 and a half minutes, minutes to go. go. Here, Here in this first, first half of a 1-1 game, game, 65 seconds, seconds in, Nathan Willhold scores and gives Collinsville a 1-0 lead. And then at the 21-30 mark, Patrick Marker scores the equalizer. And that's, that's where we stand right, right now. At midfield, Zach Covey gives it up over on the far side for Scott Gass. And now all the way up the sideline and coming out before Whitehead could get there was Fink. He'll pick the ball up after a couple of bounces and he'll waste no time sending it back into play. Right, right at midfield, midfield it goes. A couple of boys pushing, pushing on each other over there. That would be Scott Gass and Evan Caps, I believe. Yep, number 13. They, they say that Caps was, was the one who did most of the shoving, so they called it against him, and the ball is all the way down and into the box and then across the end line. Last, Last touch by Collinsville, so a goal kick restart coming up here for Caleb Fink. Coming up, up on 10 minutes, minutes to go here, here in this first half. half. Ball, Ball put back, back into play. play. Logan Norrie checks, checks into the game for the first time for the, for the Titans. Over here, here and Norrie couldn't, couldn't quite, quite get there, there in time. time. As, as when you check into the game for the, game for the first time, time, the ball has a way of finding you. you. And then that ball... Almost, almost found Nori, but just, just a little bit past him, him, and he could not stop it from going out of bounds. Throw, throw in from Ryan Knoll for Collinsville. It was a nice, nice interception there by Nico Scott. Scott. Collinsville, Collinsville putting on some pressure, shot toward, toward the goal, goal, and it goes in. in. Nice, nice shot, shot, Zach, Zach Covey. Zach, Zach Covey makes, makes it 2-1. Two two to to one. And for Covey, his second, second goal, goal of the year. year. Looks, Looks like I uh, think got, got a little bit of money, but it but Looks like it just went through, through his hands. hands.
at the, the 30-21 30, 30, mark. mark. Covey gives, gives Collinsville back, back their lead. Two to one. one. Spencer Pye checks, checks back into, into the contest for the Hawks as, as Tate Wyatt. Wyatt. It's, it's ready, ready to kick this ball back into play. play. He, he does, does so right, right at midfield, midfield and, and then sent right, right back down by the, by the Titans. Titans. And, and once, once again, Wyatt will come out. out. He'll scoop the ball up just on the inside edge of the box. And, and puts, puts it back, back into play, play one more time. time. This one at midfield. It was off of a body, and then it looked like it almost glanced, glanced straight, straight shibbish, shibbish in the face. This, this one goes, goes to Sink, or, or Fink, excuse, excuse me. And, and out to midfield, the play goes once again. again. There, there is Harms. Harms, Harms. Sends, sends it up the sideline to Wilhelm. Nice, nice job using his head. Gets it to a defender. defender bounces, bounces it up toward the middle. A couple, couple of bodies collide there as Zane Baker, Baker tried to go in and get that ball first. And the Titans, Titans get, get there. there. And then he is bowled, bowled over as Tyler Ryherd. They've had, had a lot of those, but they've been from over 50, 60 yards away. Well, I guess they're that far away. They're not quite as useful. Although that is how the Titans, Titans got, got their one goal so far. Here's, Here's Logan, Logan Whitehead. Whitehead. Picks, picks the ball, ball up at midfield. Gives it to Wiljegren. Wiljegren over, over on the far side. Here's a pass that's going to go on a bouncer. And it might do. Tell, tell you what, for a minute there, I thought it was going to go over the head of Caleb Fink and into the goal because coming in hot on him was Zane Baker. So Fink had to play that one just perfect in which he did. Now, now the ball, ball at midfield, midfield over on the far side sideline. Side Coming, Coming up, up on seven, seven minutes, minutes to go. Here in this first, first half. half. Another player, player exchange, exchange going on. Zane, Zane Baker is going to head, head to the bench. bench. Sam Hooster comes, comes into the game, game for the first time. time. Connor D is back into the game as well for the Titans. See, I, it was a lot easier for me to keep up with the substitutions when they were right in front of me. A little bit farther away to see who's coming in and who's going out. Here is Logan Whitehead. Whitehead moves the ball up, gets the ball into the feet of Huster, but couldn't penetrate any farther. And now Logan Whitehead had that ball go off the heel of his foot, and it rolls right to Caleb Fink. Looks like it would have been offsides if Collinsville had managed to take possession. Fink. Fink kicks the ball all the way, way down midfield, and Collinsville will shove it back into their defensive zone, zone and they'll let the ball go right to Wyatt, Wyatt who will kick the ball while it's rolling toward him. him. Gets, gets a lot on it. It, it meets ahead of one of the Titans, Titans players, and now Collinsville heads it right back down by Trey Shibish. Play on the far side. Here is Luke Liljegren. Liljegren turns the corner, gets around one defender, couldn't get around the other. But, but that, that defender, defender kicks the ball out of bounds, so Collinsville will have, have a throw in over on the far side. side. And, and once again, Spencer Pies will handle, handle the throw in duties. duties. He'll, He'll do, do so right in front of the Titans bench. bench. High, deep, deep throw, throw, bounce. bounce. Oh. Comes, comes out, out the other side. side. Titans, Titans try, try to chase, chase it down. They, they do so. Here is Lodgren. Lodgren keeps it in the box, but the Titans, Titans will send it back out. And chasing it down right around midfield is Spencer Vlasic, and Vlasic will just send it back to Tate Wyatt. Wyatt, Wyatt. will we'll move the ball up over on the far side sideline, side and now Wilhelm with it. Wilhelm scored the game's first goal. Up on the sideline on the far side, he's trying to get the ball back, and he will. Right, right at midfield, midfield, he'll give it up to Liljegren. Liljegren trying to get around a defender. Instead, he'll send it back. And now the ball up the sideline again, right in front of the Titans bench. bench. Nice move. And another nice move. Ball stays alive in front. Shot. And there is Sink, or Fink, excuse me, to scoop that ball right up. Got a decent amount on it, just right at him. I believe that, that was Trey Simpson, Simpson doing all that work, work wasn't it? He was, was trying to find the number as he was moving, but never could. could. I didn't see, see, see the whole number. number. As that, that ball goes into the Hayhawk cheerleader, cheerleader section. 
Another, Another throw, throw in coming from Spencer, Spencer Pies, Pies all, all the way up the sideline side and a uh, pop fly, fly stays, stays on, on the near side sideline. Side side and here is Sam, Sam Huster, Huster trying to corral, corral that ball away from Griffin Harms. Harms. And, and now, now the ball shot, shot out to midfield. midfield. There, there is Collinsville there trying to put on another run. And once again, there is Trey Simpson and he pops the ball up. Logan Whitehead trying to play it. He can't find it. Luke Logergren does all the way over on the far side. He's, He's going to send one toward the goal, goal and Huster, Huster tried, tried to use his head to put that toward the goal, but he just missed it. And as we just pass under three and a half minutes to go, it will be another goal kick for Fink. Seems like he's been at about nine of those so far. Yeah, he's been busy. Very. Fink puts the ball back in play. Well, well held off of his head, head gets it up, up to Huster. Huster, Huster, Huster on the sideline had that ball kicked out of bounds right off of his foot, foot by Patrick, Patrick Marker, who has scored, scored the only goal here for the Titans, Titans so it's going to be another throw in for Collinsville. Collinsville. And once, once again, again, it'll be Spencer, Spencer Pies. Seems like if Collinsville had a designated guy for throw ins, it seems like it's him. Yep. yep. So sure is. is. Seems like he's had about 80 or 90 percent of them. Now, now we're going to have a free, free kick. kick. Uh, foul foul call called as one of the Collinsville players got pushed from behind going up for that throw in. So, so Collinsville will have a free kick. kick. It's, it's going to be from, from about 30, 30 yards, yards away, 25 yards away. And, and it's, it's going to be taken here by Trey Shibish. I'm choosing to go with a three-man wall, think. Now, now he moves, moves over to his far right. Ball curves and right, right there is Fink, Fink to catch that ball. ball. Sends, Sends the ball back, back down. down. Out, out to, to midfield. Will, Will hold. Gets, gets a hold of it. Of it. Now, now Collinsville coming in for another try. try. Here is a chance, and a nice job again by Sink. He came way out and made that save. That was some heads-up play there by the goalkeeper for the Titans, and now Collinsville will draw another foul, and this one will be an even longer free kick. This one's going to be from about 90 yards away. Not sure who that was. Looks like that may have been a little bit out of anger. Not, Not sure. sure. No, no idea, idea who, who it was, but... Ball bounces, bounces and finally makes contact with a body. Here, Here is Spencer, Spencer Pies using his head and his chest. chest. And, and now a foul that is going to go against Caden Sporer for the Titans. And Collinsville will get to mount, mount a little bit of offense here with one minute left to go in this first half. half. Here, here is Will Hold. Will, Will hold, moves the ball up, gets, gets it to two pies, pies and kicked right back out of there, there but out of bounds by the Titans. And Pies will have another throw in opportunity here. 45 seconds left to play. Ball, ball gets over everybody's head. head. Here's a chance for Huster, Huster and he can't get, get it off, but he banks it off of the shins of Griffin Harms. And Collins will have a corner kick if they can get it off in time. 30 seconds left to play here in this first half. And it'll be Zach Covey who will take this corner kick, and he doesn't waste any time. He keeps it low off of a couple of bodies and out front. Here is Luke Lilgergren, turns around, takes the shot, can't get it through the myriad of bodies out front. Uh, return ball is going to bounce. Will Held, Logan Whitehead scores! Whitehead scores with eight seconds left to go. That is, how many, how many goals, goals is that for him now? That's, That's five. five. He, he now ties Zane, Zane Baker. Baker. All right. Three, Three to one, one in favor, favor of Collinsville. Collinsville. We'll, we'll get this ball, ball back into play, play, and then the final eight seconds, seconds will tick off the clock. clock. I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to start mine and let, let it go down to zero. How about that? Ball in the, in the air. air. 
down. down. Tate, Tate Wyatt, Wyatt waits. waits. One, one bounce, two bounce. bounce. He, he picks it up, and, and that will do it for the first half. Collinsville leads 3-1. to one. After, After one, one half, half of play, play as we will make, make our transition, transition into the Cairo, or excuse me, Cairo Practic Works, the Cafe Agape Halftime Show. Cafe Agape in Collinsville, proud, proud sponsor of our halftime show and a proud sponsor of the whole season here for Collinsville Cahawks Sports, both the sports that do have halftimes and the sports that don't have halftimes. We are going, going to step aside for just a, just a moment and we are going to come back. And, and when, when we do, do we, we hope to find a few scores for you during the uh, brief intermission, intermission that we're going to have here. And when we do, we'll uh, pass those along, along to you. That'll be in just a mere moments here on the Hawk Sports, Sports Network. Network. Agape in Collinsville. Cafe Agape serves up delicious sandwiches, burgers, steaks, pulled pork, and the Collinsville favorite, the steak and onion sandwich. Cafe Agape has weekly lunch and dinner specials with pork steak Wednesdays, meatloaf Thursdays, and fish every Friday. Cafe Agape also offers catering service, and you can get Cafe Agape delivered now through the To-Go delivery app. Cafe Agape is open Monday through Friday from 11 to 7, and they're located at 703 St. Louis Road in Collinsville, or call 345-CAFE. That's 345-2233. Hi, I'm Colton Preco. I want to thank the team at REMAX Alliance for helping me find my first home. It couldn't have been any easier. If you're in the game for a new home, contact my friends at REMAX Alliance. Cafe Agape in Collinsville. Cafe Agape serves up delicious sandwiches, burgers, steaks, pulled pork, and the Collinsville favorite, the steak and onion sandwich. Cafe Agape has weekly lunch and dinner specials with pork steak Wednesdays, meatloaf Thursdays, and fish every Friday. Cafe Agape also offers catering service, and you can get Cafe Agape delivered now through the To-Go delivery app. Cafe Agape is open Monday through Friday from 11 to 7, and they're located at 703 St. Louis Road in Collinsville, or call 345-CAFE. That's 345-2233. And we welcome you back to the Cafe Agape Halftime Show. Here at the halftime of our game, it is 3-1 in favor of Collinsville. Three first half goals scored by Nathan Wilhold, Zach Covey, and Logan Whitehead. The lone tally for the Titans was scored by Patrick Marker. So Collinsville up 3-1. Also at halftime, Altoff Catholic in soccer action is handling the Centralia Orphans. A 4 to nothing setback at halftime. Also, also some, some more boys soccer for you. Highland defeating Civic Memorial. That's, That's a final, final, by the way. 7-2. to two. Well, Fallon, Fallon, also a final. They beat the Springfield Senators by a score of 3-2. to two. And, and I believe that is all of the up-to-date action that we have for you. At, at this, this time, time uh, uh, no nope, Waterloo. Second, second half, losing, losing to Belleville West. West. By, by a score, score of 3-2. Three three to two. Two. So, I believe, I believe that, that is all the scores that I can find thus far. If I find some more, and of course, as soon as the girls let me know what happened with the volleyball game, I will, I will pass that information along to you as well. Big, Big thank you to Cafe Agape. Agape. They, they serve, serve up some great food down in Collinsville. Give, Give them a call, 345-CAFE, that's 2233, 345-2233. They're open Monday through Friday, Friday from 11 to 7 down at 703 St. Louis Road. Road. So we will we'll take a little bit of a break, break here, get ourselves some liquid refreshments and take care of business. And, and then we'll, we'll come, come back with second half action. action. That'll come your way in just a little bit here on the Hayhawk Sports Network.
I'm my team's number one fan. I've never been number one in anything until I put these babies on. Do I know where I'm going? <sighs> Absolutely. We're going through the playoffs. Allstate guarantees your rates won't go up just because of an accident, starting the day you sign up. So get accident forgiveness from Allstate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. It's good to be in good hands. Get protection plus unique extras. Call me, Mike Cluck with Allstate, for a quote today. Code 3 Barbecue Supply, home of Code 3 Spices, is first responder owned by proud Cahawk alums. Located at 302 East Main Street, Code 3 Barbecue Supply is your home for one-of-a-kind everything barbecue headquarters. Providing the best American-made barbecue grills, smokers, rubs, sauces, and accessories. And cooking expertise from professional barbecue experts. Code 3 Spices provides award-winning rubs, sauces, and they donate 25 cents of each unit sold to first responder and military organizations that focus on providing aid to the fallen, suicide prevention, and PTSD awareness. Stop on by, see the guys at Code 3 Barbecue Supply for all of your cooking and grilling needs. Code 3 Barbecue Supply, home of the Memphis in May, first place world champion Patriot sauce. Learn more about their products and mission in giving back to those who serve at Code3Spices.com. Sloan's Pub House in Collinsville. Sloan's Pub House is now into their second year of operation on Main Street in Uptown Collinsville. Sloan's Pub House offers daily lunch and dinner specials that feature homemade pizza, burgers, sandwiches, salads, and more. Sloan's Pub House offers a great variety of craft libations for you adults, as well as a great brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. Sloan's Pub House, 119 West Main Street in Collinsville. Call 855-9100 or online, sloanspubhouse.com. Hi, Purple and White fans. This is Dan Mode, class of 1989. I'm with New American Funding. Myself and New American Funding are proud sponsors of Cahawk Athletics. As we have great coaches at CHS on all the courts, fields, and tracks, we like to coach you through the home buying process and refinance process. If there's ever anything we can do, I can be reached at 618-973-5343 or www.danmodeloans.com. Let's support our student athletes at CHS. They deserve the best. Thank you for your time and go Cahawks. Motive in Collinsville. Mike's Automotive is a T3 certified tire center. They can handle all of the basics like oil changes and tune-ups, and the not so basic stuff like complete engine rebuilds. Mike's Automotive also has 24 hour towing and three locations in Millstadt, St. Louis, and in Collinsville at 1150 St. Louis Road, just blocks from the high school, or call 345-0611 online at mikesautomotive.net and Mike's Automotive on Facebook. Let's get, Let's get we, we welcome you back into the broadcast, broadcast booth here at Hawk Stadium. Stadium. Todd, Todd Duke, Zach, Zach Roseman, Roseman along with you as we have a final from Civic Memorial. Memorial. As, as far as girls, girls volleyball, volleyball is concerned, the freshmen, freshmen lost, lost both, both of their games. games. JV won both, both of their games. And the varsity also won both, both of their games, 25-11 and 25-20. So the girls volleyball team off to a two and one start to the year. I want to say their next game is at East St. Louis on Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, somewhere in that general vicinity. Usually, Usually their games are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm going to go with that. Trying to find my, my schedule here. here. When's the next volleyball game I have? That would be next week, Thursday, versus Granite City. So we have East St. Louis Tuesday, Granite City on Thursday. We'll be back here Tuesday for boys' soccer. Versus O'Fallon, versus O'Fallon before we head back over to the gym, gym on Thursday for that, that volleyball, volleyball matchup with Granite City. City. And then and next Friday finds us right back here as well uh, against the Alton Redbirds. Redbirds. And then Saturday is one of the premier uh, high school, probably one of the better high school matchups. 
high school, high school soccer, soccer matchups, matchups in the area as Collinsville will take on CBC. Yes, yes I, have I have that game, game too. too. One week from tomorrow, that's a noon start. Yes, yes it, it is. is. And then they, they uh, uh, move the East St. Louis, Louis football, football game from, from Friday, Friday night, September 21st, to, to Saturday, Saturday afternoon, September 22nd, at, at 1 o'clock. I'm not, I'm not sure when the uh, Italian, Italian Fest parade, parade starts. starts. I, wonder I wonder if that'll, that'll affect... I wonder how that'll, that'll affect the band and dance team and any, any other... Yeah. Council or school organizations that uh, we're just, just about, about ready for, for second half action. action. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see, see how that plays out. out. It's we'll have to readjust schedules if the uh, home, home football, football game that Saturday happens, happens to be at the same, same time. time. That's, that's what we wanted, wanted to do. do. We, we are underway. underway. Second, second half action. action. Cardinals are up 5 to nothing over Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh trying, trying to shake off that 2 to nothing loss last night. Get back, back on, on the winning track here. here and try, try to pick up, what, what win, win number 21 in the month of August. Here's Here's Collinsville, Collinsville putting the shot on goal right at the beginning, the beginning of the second half, half and, and there is Fink, Fink to scoop it on up. We, we are underway. Ball popped up in the air. And a nice job there. Kicking that, that ball away, away. Right, right when it came, came down, down by Trey Simpson. Simpson. Here's, Here's Tate Wyatt. Wyatt, Wyatt. sends it out, out to midfield. And <laughs> nice, nice job there. Trey Shibbis just stuck down, down, let the ball go over his head, head right, right to Logan Whitehead. Whitehead. And, and now a ball that ends up out of, out of bounds. bounds. Say yeah. yeah. I'm not... I thought, I thought it, it might have nicked the Glenwood, the Glenwood player before it went out of bounds, out of bounds but they're, they're a lot closer to the action than I am, so we'll give, give them the benefit of the doubt here. And here is Griffin Harms, who will throw, throw the ball back in right, right at midfield. Does, does so to Scott Nico. Nico. Or Nico, Nico Scott, Scott, excuse me. Keep, keep on forgetting they have last names first on this Titans roster. And that's an easy mistake to make when you've got a guy whose last name is Scott and whose first name is Nico. You can very easily mistake that as Scott Nico. Very true. Ball all the way, way down. down. Here's, Here's a chance for the Titans. Titans. They, they pop one up, and Tate Wyatt, Wyatt comes, comes out and scoops, scoops the ball up just before Kate Trotbetter Trot can get, get, there. get there. Wyatt, Wyatt. sends it back, back out to midfield. midfield. Off, off the head, off, off the chest. chest. Down, down it goes as play stays, stays at midfield. midfield. Now, now Collins will try and bring it up. Here is Zach Covey. Covey. And that ball will go just a little bit too far. and. Into, into Fink, Fink it goes, goes and Fink, Fink sends, sends the ball right back out to midfield. midfield. Titans, Titans settle, settle it down, down trying to move the ball up for a little offensive push here. Here, here is Connor Deese. And now, now a whistle. Let's, Let's thank City, City of Collinsville. You can check out the City of Collinsville's, Collinsville's Facebook page for information, information on upcoming events taking place in the city. Tunes and Bloom, that concert series is every Wednesday in September. A first concert, concert they have will be on September 5th. 5th. That'll be the Twilight Band. And, and if you'd like, like more information on that or anything Collins will have coming up, like the Italian Fest, you can, can visit the Facebook, Facebook page. Here's a shot and a saved by Wyatt. Wyatt. Collinsville, the city, city of Collinsville once again, proud supporters, supporters of the Collinsville Unit 10 School District. District. And, and they, they wish all district athletes good luck this sports season. There's, There's a, a nice, nice job, job on the steal, steal and, and coming in, all alone, takes, takes a shot, and oh yeah, yeah. What, what a couple, couple of nice moves, moves there put on by Trey Shibish. Man, he, he uh, showed, showed a lot, lot of patience, patience dribbling that, that ball upfield. Up and it paid off after, after the defense split, split. and Fink, Fink committed, over committed. And Shibish just knocks that one in, nice job. That is his third 
goal of the year? That, that is, is his first, first goal, goal of the year. year. Oh, I, I thought, thought he had a couple back, back during the tournament. The tournament. So, so I guess, I guess I was incorrect. Fourth goal, goal of the game. game. Collinsville out front, front. and, and if, if they can keep this up, up they, they will beat the Glenwood, Glenwood Titans for the first time since they were added, added to the schedule four years, years ago. ago. And we'll take them to 5-0? Five 5-0. Five five and oh. and before they play the Webster Grove Statesman, Statesman tomorrow, mm -hmm. I want to say that is a 5-45 start. I believe, I believe so. so. So here's, here's Harms. Harms. Sends it to the, the middle. middle. And moving, moving it up with a head of steam is Scott, Scott Nico. Nico. Can't, Can't see. see. Wow, wow, that was a shade, shade right off of the chest, and I believe that, that hit, hit a hand. hand. At, any At any rate, Collinsville will get, get this, this restart. restart. It'll, It'll be Tate, Tate Wyatt. Wyatt. Twenty yard line if you're looking at the football field. Thirty, 30 yards, yards away, away from his goal. goal. Off, Off of a couple of heads and back out toward midfield it goes. Trying to settle it down is Dees. He sends the ball up, popped up into the air there by Trotvetter. And popped up into the air once again. Trying to keep it in bounds. One, one number four, four to another, another number four. four. That's Riley, Riley Hotstein for... The, the Titans, Titans, Ethan, Ethan Willhold, Willhold, who has, who has a goal, goal here, here for, for Glenwood. Glenwood. Now, now they'll just send, send the ball back into Fink. Fink. Will the Titans, Titans defense, defense and Fink will send, send the ball back out to midfield. midfield and I believe, believe that, that, I don't, I don't know. know. Seems, Seems to me that, that Caden Spore accidentally elbowed Donovan, Donovan Scott Gass. And the whistle went the other way. way. Or, did or did it? Nope, nope it didn't. Okay. Uh, yep. yep. Uh, right at midfield, Collinsville will get the free kick. That is Spencer Vlasic taking the free kick. It is. And that, and that was rejected, rejected right, right when it made it inside the box. The box. Play, play takes place now in front of the Kayhawk bench. bench. Moving, Moving the ball, ball up, Zach, Zach Covey. Popped, popped out of there by the defense of the Titans. And, and then off of the head of Trotvetter, and Titans, Titans are having a hard time getting that ball out of the offensive zone, zone so they'll kick it out of bounds, bounds relieve a little bit of pressure for just a moment. Simpson, Simpson will throw the ball back in, Scott Gass gets it, sends, sends it back into the defense, and Spencer Vlasic. Vlasic now sends it over to the sideline where it ricochets off of the body of Sporer and out of bounds. I thought that maybe... Oh, no. And we're going to have a timeout for an injury. As it looks like, Trotvetter is rubbing, rubbing that leg a little bit. bit. Now, now he gets up, walks, walks it off. 21, 23. Kate we'll Trotvetter, Trotvetter will go to the bench. bench. And, and Evan Katz will, will come in to take, take his place. place. Well, I think, I think he'll, he'll be okay fairly soon. soon. He's, he's able to get off. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's running the rest of the way off. I wouldn't we'll be surprised if he's back in in uh, just, just a few minutes. minutes. Throw, Throw in comes, comes from Trey, Trey Simpson. Simpson. Up, up the near, the near side sideline. Side D's, D's there with it. it. Trying, trying to dribble, dribble his way around, around and, and now Logan Whitehead's, Whitehead's going to get called for a push in the back. back. He, doesn't he doesn't like the call. call. And, and Riffin Harms will take, take the free kick and just send it back out to midfield. Now, now the Titans, Titans try to move the ball up. Here, here is Scott, Scott over, over onto the far side. side. And over running the ball there was Will Hold, and there's a shot that goes, goes wide, wide of the goal. goal. And we'll, we'll have, have a restart, restart coming, coming up here in just a moment. moment. How about, How about all pro teams? They're, they're right across the street from us here at Kayhawk Stadium. That's your place for custom apparel for your school, your business, your sports team, and more. All pro teams. Offers, offers a variety, variety of services and options, and they'll walk you through that process step-by-step. Step step. They pride, pride themselves in being a local Collinsville business, 
and they specializing in helping their clients promote and grow that business all with, with custom, custom apparel. apparel. All, all Pro Tees, as, as I mentioned, right across the street from us here at Kayhawk Stadium. Stadium. Online, allprotees.com or call 344-222-00. Four to one, one hour score here. Wyatt, Wyatt sends it back out to midfield. midfield. And, and trying, trying to send it, send it down, down for a little offensive help. help. Zach, Zach Covey, Covey, Covey moves, moves the ball, ball down. down. Into the, the corner, corner it goes, and Zane, Zane Baker, he's trying, trying to get the ball away and can't, can't do, it. do it. As Griffin Harms accidentally, accidentally kicked, kicked that ball out of bounds. bounds. And, and Collinsville will have a throw in. Almost from the spot where they would take a corner kick. And once again, it'll be... Spencer, Spencer Pye. Pye. Last, Last time they had, they had a throw, throw in from the corner, corner kick, kick area. area. It went, went in the goal, goal right off of Wilhold's head. head. Throw, throw in on, on the way. High, high deep, deep right, right toward the middle, the middle and caught. caught. Right in midair by, by Caleb, Caleb Fink. Fink. He didn't let anyone have a chance to get ahead on that one. Pretty good play. I wonder if he plays basketball. That would have been a pretty good rebound. Yeah, it would have been. Collinsville. Gets, gets the ball, the ball and intercepts it on the defensive, defensive side of things, and, and we'll try, try to work the ball back up. up. Instead, the Titans, the Titans take over. Right, right at midfield, midfield. Here, here is Connor Deese. 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 Put, put on, on a nice little uh, exhibition, exhibition on dribbling down, down there. there. Put, put on a couple of nice, nice moves. moves. Uh, it was pretty good defense by Trey Simpson. Ball sent all the way down, and on a bounce, Tate White is out with the catch. Just, Just about, about 10 minutes, minutes gone, gone here in this second, second half. half. Another, Another 30, 30 to go. go. Collinsville leading 4-1. to one. One. Uh, right, right in front, in front of the Collinsville bench. bench. Ball, ball bouncing, bouncing around. around. Titans, Titans trying, trying to come up with it and mount a little bit of an offensive push as they trail by three, three goals. goals. As good as, as this defense, defense is for the Hawks, I would think, think that this score should hold up. There's, There's a ball sent, sent over into the corner, the corner but, but a little bit too far out of the reach of Zane, Zane Baker, so out of bounds it will go, and we will, we will have another goal, goal kick restart, restart coming up here by Fink, which gives us time to thank the Collinsville Education Association. CEA is your partner as they work, work to ensure quality education for our children. The CEA advocates excellence and equity in public education. For more information, you can visit the Collinsville Education Association's Facebook page or the CEA's new website. And that is CollinsvilleCEA.org. Play, Play at midfield, midfield albeit on, on the far side sideline. Side Titans trying, trying to move it up. up. Long throw in, looks like. Yeah. Fink, Fink has, has it. it. And after, after a couple, couple of bounces, bounces and he'll put, put it back, back into play. play. Um, although I do have to give credit to Spencer Pye as he's throwing some of these. I think, I think that's why he uh, takes, takes the majority of the throw-ins. Throw Coach, Coach knows he can throw, throw it high and far. I think he's throwing a couple of these 20, 25 yards. Yeah. yeah. Collinsville under a little, little bit of pressure there in their defensive end, but they finally worked their way out of it. Dalen Frecker, Frecker brings, brings the ball, ball up, up and then a whistle. whistle. Against the Titans. The Titans. And it, it will, will be Trey Simpson, Simpson who will put this ball back into play. play. So the girls, girls victorious up at, up at Civic, Civic Memorial, Memorial in the volleyball court. court. Taking two, two games. And then their next couple of matches will be... They, got, they, they have, have a weekend... weekend Tournament in Edwardsville. Collinsville, Collinsville moving the ball up here is Will Hold. Will Hold, excuse, excuse me. Will Hold, hold to Frecker. Frecker. Frecker over on the far side gives it up and now a pop fly heading toward, toward the box, but knocked, knocked right back out of the box by Harms. Collinsville will get the ball back and try to bring it, bring it back up. First, left to play a little bit of defense. Andrew Heaton puts on a couple, couple of nice moves there for. The Titans, the Titans and now a couple of players collide and will draw, draw a whistle. whistle. It's, it's going to go uh, against Glenwood, Glenwood, much to the chagrin of some of the Glenwood fans here in front of our broadcast, broadcast booth. 
And it'll be a free kick here for Zach Covey from about 43 yards. Covey's ready. Ball on the way. Got, got the distance, distance and, and it bounces. And Fink, Fink couldn't, couldn't quite, quite grab, grab it from, from the beginning, but he got the bounce and sends it right, it right back out, out trying to break away his team, team on a little numbers, numbers game here. here. It's, here, here comes, comes the Titans, Titans and, and there goes the Titans. Titans. Right, right back the other, the other way it goes. Collinsville works the ball back up. Out, out to, to the midfield circle. circle. Here is Trey Simpson. Simpson, Simpson moves, moves the ball up and gets it onto the foot of Huster. Huster lost control of it momentarily, and that gives enough time for, for Griffin, Griffin Harms, Harms to send, send that ball back, back out to midfield. midfield. And, and then deeper into the offensive zone, zone of the Titans by, by Andrew Heaton. Heaton. And, and now the Titans, Titans trying, trying to set things, things up in the, in the offensive, offensive zone with a little pass, pass but, but that pass was picked off in midair and, and off of the head of Donovan, Donovan Scott Gass, Gass back, back out toward midfield. midfield. Titans, Titans trying to take it over once again. Harms moves it out to the midcourt circle. Midfield circle, excuse me, to Kroschel. Up, up the, the far side sideline, side giving, giving it a chase is Will Hold. He's over there with one of the Titans, Titans players, and there's, there's a whole gaggle of teams, teams from each side, and that's going to be a foul. Pushed Push down, down from behind was Patrick Marker, Marker who has the only goal, goal here for Glenwood. Glenwood. I, believe I believe that was Pies who was guilty, and that, that ball is going to end up going across the end line. line. Put there by the Titans, so they had a golden opportunity to put on a little pressure in the offensive zone, and they end, they end up kicking, kicking the ball out of bounds. Out of bounds. Let's, Let's thank, thank the Collinsville Junior, Junior Service Club. Club. Since, Since 1934, 1934, the Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been providing women in the area an opportunity, opportunity to make a difference with fundraisers and projects. All, all that go help the needy in Collinsville. The next thing that the ladies from the Junior Service Club have, well, they have some, some toasted, toasted ravioli for sale at the Italian, Italian Fest, Fest, both Friday and Saturday, 21st. And, and the 22nd, 22nd find, find their, their booth. booth. They'll, They'll hook you up, you up with, with some fantastic deep, deep fried toasted ravioli. For more, more information on that event or any event upcoming for the Collinsville Junior Service Club, you can check out their, their Facebook, Facebook page. 24-40 left to play. Here, Here in the second, second half, Collinsville with a 4-1 lead. lead. As the Hawks look, look to improve, improve to 5-0 five five and and oh to start the season. Uh, that's got to be one of the better starts they've had. had in, I want to say, say they started 3-4 three three and four or something, something like that. Last well, well when they, they lost, lost last year to the Titans, Titans when that, 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 that loss put them right at 3-3. Three three. So, so they went into that game with a 3-2 record after the first five games. Here we are in game number five, and so far so good. Two goals before, before this game, so three altogether. That's, That's uh, pretty, pretty stellar. stellar. They're allowing about a half a goal a game. game. And, and so, so far, if this stays, stays four to one, it'll stay a half a goal a game. And how many goals have they scored now? 24. Oh, I, thought I thought they had 20 going into the Belleville West game. Yeah, yeah they, they have 24 now with four on the board here. No, they, no, they had, had uh, 16 go or uh, 14 going into that game. They, they scored, scored six to make it 20. 20. They're, They're averaging five, five goals, goals a game. game. So, 20, so, so assuming the scores stay the same, 24 divided by five. Not, that'll, that'll be a little under five, five goals a game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Unless, Unless they, they can score one, one more here, here then it'll be exactly five, five goals a game. game. They've, They've got, got plenty, plenty of time to do it. 23 minutes left to play here in the second half. And here comes Collinsville looking for that fifth goal. They settle it down and bring it out to the outside. And chasing it down over there. Into, into the middle. middle. Donovan, Donovan Scott Gass, a shot. shot. Man, that was a rocket, rocket shot, shot by Coffey, stopped, stopped in front by the, by the defense for the Titans. Titans. And, and now Evan Caps tries, tries to move it up and give Glenwood some little offensive, some offensive pressure. But Collinsville's defense, defense is there to step it up and take the ball right back. Right, right at midfield. midfield. Pies gets, gets it back to Will Hold. Will Hold will send the ball all the way down into the box. And Collinsville tries, tries to get there. Hooster puts on a shot and, and it goes right past the diving, diving Caleb, Caleb Fink. Fink but it was, it was, it was out, out of bounds. I thought I heard a whistle too. I'm not, not sure. If I thought for a second that may have been for a handball or something. At any rate, Fink will get another goal kick restart ready to go here. 
just now past 22 minutes to go. Oh, for, for one, one of the Collinsville, Collinsville players, players and, and back, back out to, to midfield. midfield. And, and now, now we have a whistle. Actually, no. Foul is on Collinsville. Not sure, sure who that is taking, taking the free kick. kick. Well, it's, oh, it's on, the on the way. Off, Off of a head out front. front. And, and back, back out to midfield, midfield it goes where Sam, Sam Huster only has, has two, two people to get around and he's got some help over on the left wing, wing in the form of Zach Covey. He tries, he tries to get it to Covey in, in the box. Covey sends, sends it back out, puts a shot on goal, and Fink just got a piece of it. Probably was going to go wide anyway, but he got a piece of it to make sure that it did not go in. That was almost like a soccer version of a hockey breakaway. Uh, you, you heard, heard anything, anything in regards to the hockey schedule so far? Oh, oh no, no, I won't, I won't find that out until probably, probably October. October. Yeah. You know, yeah, that doesn't, they're not, they're not an, an IHSA, IHSA sport, sport, they're a club sport, sport so, so they, they kind of do their own thing, thing and they'll, they'll let me know, know when they have that schedule. schedule. Here's, Here's a corner kick by Collinsville off of one of the Titans heads out front and then it'll head all the way over the near side sideline. And Collinsville, Collinsville and Spencer Pies will have a throw in from there. So we, so we go, go from a corner, corner kick, kick on, on the near side, side to a throw, throw in on the far side. side. Pies tosses, tosses it high, deep, deep in, in front, front, and once again, once again right, right to Caleb, Caleb Fink. Fink. Just, Just about, about halfway, halfway through the second half, half Collinsville leading 4-1. Three, Three goals, goals in the first half. half. Trey Shibish has added the fourth, fourth one here in the second half. half. And Collinsville looking to beat the Glenwood Titans for the first time since they were put on the schedule four years ago. Bouncing ball right in front of the box that draws a whistle because a little too aggressive on the play was Elvis Campos. As he kind of pushed Trawetter out of the way. And I'm guessing you're not allowed to do that. Ball put, put back, back into play, play by, by Fink, Fink right, right at midfield. Oh! A couple, couple of players, players run into each other there, there and that, that draws, draws a whistle. Nothing, nothing intentional, but still, still draws, draws the whistle, the whistle and, and Titans, Titans will have, have a free kick, kick from, from right, right about midfield, midfield 50, 50 yards, yards away. away. Pop, pop fly. fly. Off, off of the, the body, body of one, one of the Titans, Titans players and rolled, rolled down, down the back, back and then out, out of bounds. So, so Tate, Tate Wyatt, Wyatt will we'll send, send us back, back into play at midfield. As soon as he lets, lets this ball, ball fly, which he does now. now. And, and it will be right at midfield. midfield. Comes, comes down, down and then out of, out of bounds. bounds. Logan, Logan, Logan Nori. Nori. Couldn't, couldn't control, control the ball and it goes out of bounds and, and a throw in restart coming from midfield, midfield here by Ryan, Ryan Null. Null. Just, Just missed, missed Huster. Huster. Titans. Titans. Trying, Trying to find, find some momentum. momentum. As, as they, they trail, trail by three, three. and right, right now, now Collinsville putting, putting on, on more, more offensive, offensive pressure. Here is Campos over, over on the far side, and he has, he has that ball taken right, right off of his foot by one of the tight players, players. and it's, it's going to be another throw, throw in here by none, none other than Spencer, Spencer Pies. Pies. Far, far side sideline. Side Not, Not as high, high. and right into the hands once again of Caleb Fink. Fink, Fink learned, learned that, that first time, time after Will, Will Hold got, got his head on it, on it he would be better off getting his hands on it himself. He has, he has done, done that ever since. since. Uh, about four of those? Yeah. yeah. There's, There's enough time, he might be able to do a couple more. Will, Will Hold sends the ball, ball past midfield. midfield. Collinsville, 
Connor, Connor Deese. Deese. Puts, Puts on another, another pretty, pretty good display, display of dribbling there. there. Now over on the far, far side, it's Ethan Alexander, Alexander with the ball. With the ball. Now, now Alexander gets, gets it right, right back. back. Looks, Looks like he's playing, playing with a cast, cast on his left arm. Play right, right now, kind of, of stuck, stuck in midfield. midfield. Second half started a little bit. A little, a little, a little chippy. chippy. Well, well, a little, a little slower. slower. <coughs> That's the term I was going to use. Although, Although you're, you're not, not wrong, wrong either. Looks like one of the Collins players have a throw from about midfield. All, All the way into the Collinsville offensive zone. zone. It gets by everyone and rolls right to Caleb Fink. Fink, Fink. Sends, sends the ball sky, sky high. high. And, and into, into the Titans', Titans offensive, offensive zone, zone where the Titans, Titans look to work, work it in deep. deep. And, and give Tate, Tate Wyatt, Wyatt a little, little bit of work. work. And, and another, another whistle, whistle against Collinsville, Collinsville will give the Titans, Titans a free kick from midfield, from midfield once again. again. At, least, At least, you know, Collinsville's taken, taken some liberties with some penalties, penalties but they've all been right around midfield. And all the free kicks all night long for the Titans have been from... 40, 40, 50, 50 60, 60 yards. yards. And really, really only one time has any of them really come to anything. There's, There's one, one that goes, goes off the head, but goes, goes wide. wide. That'll give us a chance, chance to thank another one of our new sponsors. sponsors. How about Lakeside, Lakeside Roofing in Collinsville? Let the professionals, professionals at Lakeside, Lakeside Roofing protect, protect your most important investment, investment your home, or your, your business. business. Have the yeah, elements taken a toll on your roof system? Notice a leaking roof? Maybe it's time for a free roof inspection. Regular, regular maintenance, maintenance can extend the life, life of your roofing system by 10 years or more. Lakeside, Lakeside Roofing is your winning team for commercial and residential roofing systems. systems. Lakeside's, Lakeside's all-star professionals have installed, repaired, and maintained hundreds of roofs on both sides of the river. Call Lakeside, Lakeside Roofing today at 344-2800 on this side of the river. If you are over on the Missouri side, 314-241-5253 or online, lakesideroofing.com. Dot com. Choose, choose experience, choose Lakeside. At, At midfield, midfield and that's where, where the play is taking place. place. Collinsville is content with making sure the game takes place at midfield for the rest of the 14 and a half minutes that we have. Free kick Collinsville. Yep. Going to be taken by offset far side. side. Not quite sure who that is. No, the, the numbers, numbers on the backs, backs are a lot bigger than the ones on the fronts. Oh, oh well, that one almost found, found its way through and ends, ends up going just, just wide, wide. I believe that was Dalen Frecker with, with that free kick. kick. And, and now here is Will Hold right, right at midfield. The ball popped, popped in the offensive zone by Caden Sporer for Glenwood. Glenwood. Here is Frecker. Moves it up, up to Campos. 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 Got, Got a little bit too much on that ball, and then he couldn't quite catch up, up with it, so the Titans, Titans will take over possession. possession. They move the ball up, trying to get a little bit of offense going, going here. here. Collinsville is up to the task and gets, gets the ball out of the, the way. way. Now, now out to, to midfield. midfield. Huster, Huster takes, takes over. over. Trying to kick it off that back heel and spring one of his teammates for a little bit of an offensive chance, but... And it didn't work out. out. <coughs> Whistle. Whistle. Looks like another foul. Looks like a foul on Glenwood. And let me see. That number. Welcome, Welcome to my, my world, man. man. Again, Sometimes trying, trying to see these numbers, numbers is tough. 11, I think. It would, it would be Donovan, Donovan Scott Gass. Gass. And, and there's, there's a shot, shot that goes over. over. There, there was a field goal, goal for the football, football team. team. Nice, nice shot, shot taken, taken there by Ryan, Ryan Null, but got a little bit too much lift on it. Fink, Fink. Sends, sends all the way out to midfield, Collinsville. 
or they'll, they'll try to send, send it back, back the other way, way they, they will after a whistle, whistle. Going, going against, against Glenwood. I believe that was Zan Dogan who got, got whistled for that fraction. fraction. Collinsville, Collinsville working the ball up. Nice moves, moves. couple of them there by Pies. Pies, Pies will turn around and, and then he'll try to send, to send the ball back but can't do it. it. Once again, there, there is Ryan Null trying, trying to stop it but he couldn't, couldn't stop it from going, going out of bounds. So Collinsville, Collinsville will give the ball up. 11 and a half minutes to play. Collinsville up 4-1. to one. Throw, Throw in coming, coming from K. Trotbetter. And the ball trickles out of bounds once again. again. Titans bring it up. Nico, Nico Scott. Scott. Penetrated, penetrated the zone, zone and then lost control, control of the ball. ball. Here, Here is Harms. Harms, Harms puts, puts on a couple of nice moves and has that shot just, just go a little bit wide. wide. Tate, Tate Wyatt, Wyatt was there on the far side, side corner. I think it was a little high and wide. wide. Wyatt had, had it the whole way, but he really didn't need to touch it as the ball did not go as close to the goal as Mr. Harms thought it was going to. So Wyatt will put the ball down. Send it back out. To, to midfield. midfield. Ooh. Couple, Couple of headshots head there, there, man. I'll tell you what, that was... Maximus Lawrence just accidentally got knocked in the head by Andrew Heaton as both of them went up for the ball and then both of them did that head slam thing trying to get to the ball and I think they slammed heads instead of touching the ball. Both of them were okay, though. The teenagers, they have hard heads. I know, I, know, I got one at home. She's, She's got, got the, the hardest, hardest head of all. all. <laughs> <laughs> Under 10 minutes to go, go here, here in this one. one. Second, Second half, half action, 4-1 four four in favor of Collinsville. Collinsville. Here, here is Ryan Knoll. Knoll gets, gets out of the scrum with the ball, puts, puts a shot on goal, but that's blocked out by Eaton. And a couple of players, players run into each other. Huster, Huster. lucky he didn't get the whistle on that one. As the Hawks bring the ball up, looking for that fifth, fifth goal. goal. Here, Here we are, right, right in the middle. middle. Another, Another couple of nice moves. moves. That, that was a trip. trip. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that one should be called. And right, right in front of the box, it, it should be Dalen Frecker, who will get, get an opportunity here for a free kick, kick right in front of the little bubble on top of the box. Referee will, will put the ball where he wants, wants it. it. And, and it will be Dalen Frecker who will take the shot from about 25 yards out. out. Got a wall of five Titans standing, standing in front of him this time. time. And we'll take a couple of steps back to about the... Oh. Here we go. Oh, oh that, that was off of somebody's, somebody's face. face. <laughs> And, and now another, another shove down, down from behind by Heaton. And, and another free kick getting, getting ready to come up here for young Mr. Frecker. Frecker but this, this one's going to be from about 40 yards away. And, and it's on the way. way. A little low one. Pops, pops straight, straight up into the air. And, and here comes Fink. He kind of slaps, slaps it down, down with his hands like a volleyball player would. Luckily for him, it came right back to him because that could have been dangerous. Fink sends, sends it out. Off of the head of Ryan Knoll. And once again, Heaton. He, that's, that's a third, third time now, now that Heaton's, Heaton's got, got a whistle, whistle against him for taking a body off the play. play. How, many How many times are you going to let that happen before you bring out that yellow card? card? I wonder. Is, uh, 20. That's Ryan Knoll, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the first two times were against Frecker. Now it's against Knoll. Titans, Titans get the ball, ball back, back, however, and that, that didn't last very long as that pass was errant, went by everyone, went by everyone wearing white, and the only people that were back there were the ones wearing purple. purple. Here is Campos, Campos whose pop fly goes right, right into the bench of the Hawks. Play, 
play, play at, at midfield. midfield. And the ball, ball will stay, stay in midfield, midfield for, for a moment. moment. As Collinsville looks, looks like they, they might break, break that three-game three losing streak against Titans. Titans. Mm. Uh, all right, Noel. We'll had that one kind of go by him a little bit. That is off of a Collinsville player. So the ball will be at midfield. Throw, Throw in coming from Cade Trotbetter. Coming up on six minutes to play here in the second half. And that ball will end up out of bounds. And stay with the Titans. Yes, it will. And we'll have an opportunity to put a ball toward the goal on a throw in. And this one again will be trot better. Throw in. A little short. Now it bounces in front. And uh, an attempted shot, shot that. Nicked, nicked off of somebody. Somebody, somebody wearing white. And Tate Wyatt will have, have a new soccer, soccer ball thrown into him. And he will send us back to another restart. restart. Logan Nori checks, checks out, out of the game for the Titans. Titans and Ozan Dugan comes, comes in. Wyatt, Wyatt sends, sends it back out to midfield. Coming, coming up on five, five minutes to play. play. The ball, ball ends up out of bounds, bounds again, not touched by anyone after Wyatt, Wyatt kicked, kicked it, so belongs to the Titans. Evan, Evan Caps had, had a hold of it for a moment. moment. Here is Huster. Huster, Huster, Huster trying, trying to wrestle it away, and a little tug, tug on the jersey there, but Will Hold gets, gets out of it. it. Will Hold scored the first goal in this game. game. It's Covey's goal, though, that broke the 1-1 one tie, so right now Covey stands to have the game-winning goal. Far, Far side, side running the Kayhawk Hawk bench. Titans, Titans keep, keep it alive, but just barely as that ball goes right into their bench. And Huster will throw it in from, in from over there. there. Will Hold checks, checks out of the game. game. Coming in to take his place is Wes Hens. Titans trying, trying to get, get the ball out of Collinsville's offensive zone. zone. And now, now a whistle. whistle. We'll keep, keep it in there, there and Huster, Huster will throw it in. It in. Spencer Pies has been the throw in king all night, but he's on the bench right now, now having a little bit of a break. break. Huster throws, throws it in, gets it back. back. Collinsville sends it out to midfield, midfield and now. They send, send it back, back to the defense, defense just chewing, chewing up precious time. time. Here is Hens. Moving the ball up at, at midfield. Collinsville. Gives, gives it up on a turnover. turnover. And, and now the Titans will give it up on a turnover themselves just as they were getting ready to move into, into their offensive zone. zone. Nice, nice, nice job getting, getting, getting out of there. there. Here, Here is Nick Corzine. Corzine moves, moves the ball up off of a body. And a little... Tug, tug of the jersey, jersey there, yeah. Saw, saw that. that. Dogan gets, gets called for the infraction as he tugged, tugged on the jersey of Corzine for just a moment. Looks like uh, number 15 was maybe asking for a handball. Well, well, he, he can, can ask all he wants. Well, he can be politely, politely declined. declined. Ball, ball goes down and, and a couple of bounces, and that means Fink will have to come out and make a save. He does. As we are down to the final two minutes and 40 seconds left here in this second half, so barring some kind of a freakish incident in which the Glenwood or the excuse me Glenwood Titans can score three goals to tie it up, looks like Collinsville will break that three-year losing streak to Glenwood. Collinsville maybe not done yet. Here is Hens moves the ball up, but that one's going to go a little bit too far before Campos or even. Anthony, Anthony Copatelli can, can get, get there. there. Picked, Picked up by Fink. Fink. And he, he will send it out to midfield. midfield. Another, 
their whistle. whistle. This, this time, time the push from, from behind belongs to Collinsville, so the kick, kick will come from right about midfield, midfield as, as we are down to the final minute 45. 45. Too much longer. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh that, that was, was a nice play. play. Collinsville defensively as Wyatt got taken, taken off of his mark, mark a little bit. bit. But, but what, what a good, good heads up play there by Maximus Lawrence to keep, keep that ball out of the net. net. Ball, ball thrown in, in. Right, right in front. front. And we, we have one, one minute left to play here, here in this one. one. That, that ball ends up going, going out of bounds. bounds. And Collinsville will get the ball back, back and they, they can uh, waste, waste a lot of time, time here getting this one back in. in. They, they won't. Okay, Hawks bringing, bringing the ball up. Not, Not so, so fast, said the Titans. Titans. They want, they want another, another crack, crack at getting another goal, goal here. Turn, Turn around. Caps. Caps. Couldn't, couldn't quite, quite get anything, anything on it. 30, 30 seconds left. Chasing, Chasing up the far side is Hens. Back, Back over to this side, side it goes. Ryan, Ryan Noll could, could not chase it down before it goes out of bounds. bounds but not, not going to matter anyway. anyway. Final, Final 10, 10 seconds. We'll tick off the clock here as... Ryan, Ryan Null, Null will, will throw, throw the ball, ball back, back in, in, and that'll just about do it as the Hawks win this, this one by a final score of four to one and improve to five and zero oh to, to start the season. That makes us go into the Cullop Jennings Forest post game show. Cullop Jennings Forest, a staple in the Collegeville area, has been for generations. Cullop Jennings, Jennings Forest has, has weekly, weekly specials. You can, you can stop in for the weekly, weekly special this week, which is a dozen short stem roses for $35. For information on that special or any other special, give Cullop Jennings a call at 344-0404 or online at cullopjennings.com. Post game show comes your way next on the Hawk Sports Network. Forest, a Collinsville original since 1939. Cullop Jennings Forest has a wide variety of green and blooming plants, specializing in all design styles from traditional to trend setting. Cullop Jennings Forest is, of course, your place for beautiful flowers, suitable for any occasion, from anniversaries to birthdays, graduations to weddings. Cullop Jennings Forest is there for any of life's major moments. Cullop Jennings Florist, 517 West Clay Street in Collinsville. Call 344-0404 or online, cullopjennings.com. I'm my team's number one fan. I've never been number one in anything until I put these babies on. Do I know where I'm going? <sighs> Absolutely. We're going through the playoffs. Allstate guarantees your rates won't go up just because of an accident, starting the day you sign up. So get accident forgiveness from Allstate and be better protected from mayhem, like me. It's good to be in good hands. Get protection plus unique extras. Call me, Mike Cluck with Allstate, for a quote today. Hi, I'm Colton Preco. I want to thank the team at REMAX Alliance for helping me find my first home. It couldn't have been any easier. If you're in the game for a new home, contact my friends at REMAX Alliance. Florist, a Collinsville original since 1939. Cullop Jennings Florist has a wide variety of green and blooming plants, specializing in all design styles from traditional to trend setting. Cullop Jennings Florist is, of course, your place for beautiful flowers, suitable for any occasion, from anniversaries to birthdays, graduations to weddings. Cullop Jennings Florist is there for any of life's major moments. Cullop Jennings Florist, 517 West Clay Street in Collinsville. Call 344-0404 or online, cullopjennings.com. And we, and we welcome you back, back into, into the Call of Jennings Forest post game show here on the K Hawks Sports Network. Network. Collinsville wins this one by, by a final score of four to one over the Titans of Glenwood High School out of Chatham. So the Collinsville K Hawks are 5 0 to start the season, and that drops the Glenwood Titans down to a record of 3 3 and 1. 
And next, next up, up for Collinsville, Collinsville will be a battle, battle tomorrow against, against Webster Groves at 5.45 p.m. And, and next up for the Glenwood Titans, Titans. They, they don't play again until Saturday. They, they are in Darien, Darien Illinois, Illinois, to take on Hinsdale South, South, and that'll be Saturday afternoon as, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and then Collinsville has a 545 game on Friday. So, so we, we welcome in assistant coach Jeff, Jeff Hayes in the broadcast booth to talk about this one. How about that, man? 5-0 and to start the season. That's a pretty nice feeling, isn't it? That's a great start. Um, I guess, I guess we, do we do complain a little bit to the boys, uh, <laughs> just because we kind of feel it's our job, job but they're doing, doing a pretty good, good pretty good job out there. Yeah, yeah. Will, Will Hold gets, gets his first goal. Always nice to get that first goal out of the way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah especially, especially for him. him. Um, you, know, you know, I think tonight he and Donovan in the in the middle of the backfield uh, really clean things up for us, and we've kind of been struggling there a little bit, so it's nice to see them dominating the backfield and winning the balls back there, but even then... Being, being able, able to push, push up into the box, box on something like a deep throw and get a header. Yeah, well, yeah when, you know, uh, speaking of the deep throw, that's all on uh, Spencer Pison. He, I mean, he does that every single time he throws the ball in. And, you know, Fink, their, their goalkeeper got caught that first time when that header went off will hold. Every, every other throw in that Pies had toward the goal, Fink, Fink caught it before anybody could have a chance to get to it. Yeah, that's a weapon. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm glad that we have that on the field with him playing in the backfield. He's on the field quite a bit. So I think that if we kind of uh, clean that up a little bit and come up with a, a couple of plays. There at the end, it looked like we were just throwing the ball deep and the keeper was catching it and nobody was kind of really going for it. So we can clean that up a little bit too and, and really use that to our advantage this season. Yeah, you had uh, one of the uh, bench guys come in late and save a goal with his head. Maximus Lawrence, man, he came down there. It was perfect timing, wasn't it? Yeah, you know what? That's fun That's fun for me, especially those guys that I coach at the JV level that are dual rostered. To, to see them get into the game, game and then make some big plays, plays like that, that. Uh, it's nice. nice. Dalen Frecker is one of those guys, and he did a, a really good job in the middle of the field uh, spreading the ball around. Uh, uh, Ryan Knoll came in off uh, the bench and played some wing back, back and he does that for me at the JV level, level. and uh, made, made some good tackles, won some good head balls, and then even got a couple shots off too. So it's nice to see that we're we're uh, competing, competing in all these games and putting things together, things together so early on in the season, season. And, and then you're getting minutes for some of those guys and getting experience that they're definitely going to need down the road. How are, are you and the JVers doing this year? This year? What's your record? Uh, one and oh, today. Oh, oh, it was your first one. Our first game. Yeah, we had a game canceled against Belleville West because of the heat. So this was our first game to kind of finally get our legs underneath us. Congratulations on that three to one win. Then yeah, it's always nice to get two. Yep, this is a great program. Chatham always has a good team, and and if you talk to their coaches, they'd say they're a little young and they're having, having a down year, but as you, you can tell, I mean, the score line is 4-1, but um, they, they definitely have some guys that can play. play. Yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, one of your guys that can play that kept you in the game and kept, kept the game pretty much scoreless except, except for that first goal was Tate White. He's had a pretty good start to his year. Yeah, he has. I think this year we're stressing shutouts quite a bit, and I think our back line is taking that seriously, taking some pride into that. You know, Tate's one of those guys where – uh, he, he was behind, behind Nedswick, Nedswick. He kind of learning from him, him who was a four-year four starter here, and, and he's, he's finally getting that year to kind of shine. Um, Logan, Logan Raider is a pretty darn, darn good keeper, too, who plays JV, but kind of pushes uh, Tate in practice, practice as well. So, uh, I'll tell, tell you what, what having two good keepers is a blessing. Yeah. yeah. You don't get that often. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so you're 5-0, and, and you have outscored your opponent 24-3 to in five games. It's impressive. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're spreading the ball around, too. It's not just one guy that's getting four and five goals, uh, you know, at a time. Um, I, I think we have probably four guys that have four goals. Four goals, goals or more. Um, I mean, you, you guys uh, have, have another couple of guys chipping in, so it's, it's dangerous. We, I mean, you can't key on one guy for us because somebody else will hurt you if you do. Yeah, yeah. guys, guys uh, don't, don't get, get much rest. rest. You, you have Webster Robes tomorrow. tomorrow. What, what do you know about the statesman? Uh, the, uh, another great program. I've got a buddy whose son played over there in the last uh, last couple of years, and they've had some success. Um, I believe we played them a couple years back in the semifinals of the CYC tournament, and it was a pretty good match there, too. So um, it's, it's fun, fun to have games like that on your schedule against teams that you don't see on a regular, regular basis. Um, they, they have one good win over Farmington, and we're going to be their second game. So we're, we're clicking, and hopefully we can take advantage of that. I know Coach Lugie was doing a good job tonight of getting some guys into the game so some of our, our uh, big guys could uh, rest their legs a little bit going into that. Well, you know we got football tomorrow, so we can't be there for that one. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be texting. I got, <laughs> I got, I got you guys Tuesday against O'Fallon, and then uh, a week from Saturday against CBC. Yeah, they uh, 
They, they uh, pretty, uh, pretty much handed it to Edwardsville, Edwardsville tonight. tonight. Last, Last time I checked, that score was 5-1. And Edwardsville's got a good team. So when CBC's beating a team 5-1, you know that they're uh, – Pretty, pretty sharp. sharp. So, so I think, think right, right now they're ranked number 14, 14 in the country. And for us, that'll, that'll be a, a good, good test of where we really are. are. Yeah. yeah. Look, Look at the signpost. Sign yeah. yeah. It'll tell, tell you where you are. are. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thanks, Thanks a lot, Coach. Coach. I appreciate, appreciate the visit. visit. That is Coach Jeff Hayes, Hayes the assistant coach for Coach Rob Luby and the boys' soccer team wins here tonight by a kind of final score of 4-1. We'll take another break here on the Call of Jennings Forest pregame show. When we come back, we'll recap the scoring and then we'll call it a night. We'll do that next on the Chaos Sports Network. Florist, a Collinsville original since 1939. Co-op Jennings Florist has a wide variety of green and blooming plants, specializing in all design styles from traditional to trend setting. Co-op Jennings Florist is, of course, your place for beautiful flowers, suitable for any occasion, from anniversaries to birthdays, graduations to weddings. Co-op Jennings Florist is there for any of life's major moments. Call up Jennings Florist, 517 West Clay Street in Collinsville. Call 344-0404 or online, callupjennings.com. Todd, Todd Duke back, back in the broadcast, broadcast booth with you here on the Kayhawk Sports, Sports Network. Network. Collinsville wins this one tonight by a final score of 4-1. to one. One. Nathan Nathan Will hold got, got everything started for Collinsville just 65 seconds into the game on, on a throw-in by, by Spencer Pies, Pies and then Will hold used his head, went, went right into the goal, and Collinsville was up to a one to nothing lead. lead. That lead lasted all the way until the 21-30 mark when Mr. Marker Got, got his, his first goal, goal for the Titans. Titans. Patrick, Patrick Marker scored, scored to make it 1-1. One to one. One. Zach Covey then scored about nine minutes, minutes later to make it 2-1. Two two to one. And Logan Whitehead, Whitehead with about eight seconds left to go in, in that first half, half scored the goal that would give Collinsville a 3-1 to one lead. And then Trey Shibish gets the only goal in the second half for either team. And Collinsville wins it 4-1. to one. JV, they also won by a score of 3-1. to one. And the girls' volleyball team. Also, also won. The varsity side, side did anyway. They won 25-11 and 25-20. JV also won in two games, but the freshman girls lost in their two games against Civic Memorial. That's, That's going to do it for me for tonight. We're back at you tomorrow. tomorrow. Week number two of the football season finds us in Troy doing battle with the Triad Knights. That game scheduled for 7 o'clock will be on the air at around 6.40. With, with the pregame pre show. show. Thanks, Thanks to Coach, Coach Rob Lugie for joining me on the pregame show for this contest. Big thank you to Zach Roseman for providing a little color commentary and more importantly operating the camera throughout the game. And then of course a big, big thank you to Coach, Coach Jeff Hayes coming up to spend a little time with us in the postgame post show. show. My name is Todd Duke. Duke. That is going to do it for tonight and until tomorrow. Everyone have a fantastic evening.